Hello and welcome to Wasted Potential, where we discuss the wasted potential of our favourite plotlines. Throughout the series, I have largely focused on bad continuity and wasted opportunities, but an area I haven't touched on all that much is Netherrealm's butchering of the personalities and characterization of many characters from the Midway era. And one of the finest examples of this stripping away of the depth and nuance of a classic character is Shao Kahn. I would argue that what they did to him is worse than Scorpion being a toady of Quan Chi, Sub-Zero's lack of empathy towards anyone not wearing yellow, Melina's infantilization, Goro's lost honour, Raiden's incompetence, Liu Kang's growing arrogance, and the general lack of individuality and motivations and goals that the entire cast now suffers. The only character I think exceeds Khan's ruination is Sindel. Let that sink in. In the Midway era, Shao Kahn was one of the greatest video game villains of all time. He looked like a mix between Conan the Barbarian, Oda Nobunaga and the Shredder, yes, but he was more than that, and reducing him to just this paper-thin muscle man with a brain tumour is a child's understanding of the character, which is quite indicative of Netherrealm's transformation of the characters and setting into G.I. fucking Joe. He was powerful and imposing, but also intelligent and scheming. In the Netherrealm era, he's a brutish Neanderthal who needs his followers to do all the thinking for him. When he was introduced in MK2, Shao Kahn was first shown in shadow, towering over Shang Tsung who was begging for his life. This new threat is so powerful and imposing that even the last game's final boss is terrified of him. You can't get a much stronger setup for the new threat than that. He had conquered many realms and was evidently powerful and wise enough to be able to maintain his vast empire for at least 10,000 years. His scheming was shown lightly through Melina, a clone of Katana he'd commissioned to eventually kill and replace her, posing as Katana from then on since he knew Katana would one day betray him. In MK3, we got to see just how crafty he could be. After he took Sindel as his wife and she killed herself, he kept her soul imprisoned until he needed it. 10,000 years later, after he himself had lost to Liu Kang, that time was now. He had her resurrected under mind control in Earthrealm, that way he'd be allowed to head there and reclaim his wife, an opportunity he would capitalise on to invade. We also got clarification that Sindel and Katana were royalty of Edenia, not Outworld, meaning that Khan hadn't usurped Outworld from Jared and Sindel and ruled for 10,000 years, he had conquered Outworld and then bested Edenia in Mortal Kombat, which meant his empire had stood for even longer than that. After sitting out MK4, Khan appeared in the intro of Deadly Alliance, where his death was used to highlight just how serious a threat the titular alliance was. In Deception, we learned that Khan had not conquered Outworld himself. He had aided Onaga's conquest of the realm and then, knowing he couldn't take Onaga in a fair fight, he poisoned Onaga until he was weak enough that he could take him. Again, this highlights how crafty Khan Khan truly was, while also further using him as a benchmark for how grave the new threat is. Even the final boss of MK2 and 3 could not take Onaga in a straight fight. That's the level of reverence this franchise has always had for Khan, he is the bar by which all other final bosses are judged. And yet, he still always comes out on top, even though there are individuals that are more powerful than him, his guile will keep him in power or bring him back to it in short order should he ever lose it. Khan, as of deception, can be easily compared to Shang Tsung and Quan Chi. Their alliance made so much sense because they were such similar characters. They were both the right-hand man to their respective master, Shao Kahn and Shinnok, with secret plans to betray and kill their masters. Khan filled that same role for Onaga. While Quan Chi only managed to screw Shinnok over by stealing his amulet, Shang Tsung actually managed to overthrow and supplant his own master as ruler of Outworld. Except not really fucko, because Shao Kahn faked his death and went to gather allies for his return to power. Not only is Khan the only one of the three to actually succeed in assassinating and supplanting his master, but he was also smart enough to avoid it happening to him. He then spent the rest of Deception recruiting allies such as Goro. Goro had defected to Katana's side back in MK4, but Khan saved his life to earn his loyalty after his near death at the hand of Noob Saibot, who had been operating on Khan's orders to begin with. While he obviously hadn't intended it to go quite this perfectly, Khan never missed a chance to capitalise on his good fortune. By Armageddon, he was back in power, as Melina had become the interim ruler after Onaga's death. Whether due to being programmed to obey him, her subservient Tarkatan nature, secret betrayal plans, or just natural self-preservation instincts, Melina instantly submitted to Khan's rule again. That's the kind of power he wields. And again, he didn't try to make a move against Onaga. He waited for someone else to do it, and then seized his chance to reclaim his throne. He was then recruited as one of the four figureheads of Shinnok's alliance, with the clear motive to betray the rest and seize Blaze's power for himself. 2011 then shows him to have done exactly that, and beaten Blaze in the end. Given how clear it was that Taven was supposed to be the victor, it's not hard to assume Khan waited for the right time there and batted Taven aside when Blaze was weakened and then scored the finishing blow. 
But, once those visions reach Raiden, Shao Kahn becomes a completely different character. His new timeline introduction, the equivalent of MK2's intro, is so blasé. He just shows up in a neutrally lit scene. This is your main villain and his first appearance, as with the 9 time MK champion earlier, is shot with less significance than Reptile's debut. Yes, I know he'd already appeared in the prologue, but that was a different version of him. This is shockingly poor planning for what was intended as a fresh start for the series with the expectation of bringing in new fans. But, I suppose it is an accurate representation of how little presence he has as a threat in this game. The first sign of how badly his characterization is botched in this game is during Kitana's chapter. I've discussed this in the past, but it bears repeating. Kitana discovers that Shang Tsung has been performing cloning experiments on her. She, still under the impression that Khan is her loving father, brings Shang Tsung before him for judgment, having no idea that Khan had commissioned Melina's creation in the first place. Instead of playing into her ignorance and later having her memories altered to believe Melina is her twin sister, Khan goes full Bond villain and tells her everything. Not just that it was his idea, but also that he is not her real father and actually killed her father and led her mother to suicide. He then has her sent to the tower under the guard of someone who already failed at guarding a prisoner not two hours ago, with a plan to later have her transferred to the arena for a public execution. There are more holes in this plan than a victim of Aaron Black's six-shooter fatality. Not only does it run the risk of her being rescued before her transfer, which she almost is, but it's also pointless because he and his entourage are about to go to the arena themselves so they could just bring her with them. He then makes no attempt to stop Liu Kang when he goes to free her, though that could just be because it takes him the length of Kung Lao's fights with both Sorcerers and Kintaro to get one of her hands free. And it completely defeats the purpose of having Melina created in the first place since she's supposed to supplant Kitana, which cannot be done if Kitana is given a public execution. Just kill her in the throne room and have Melina take her place among Raiden's allies until the time is right. Even Annihilation Khan was able to get a mole in Raiden's group for a while, you fucking mong. After he kills Kung Lao, he makes no attempt to abuse his position as host of the tournament to prevent the champion of Mortal Kombat from attacking him in retaliation, probably because he's high on achieving his single victorious feat in this entire timeline. The plan to revive Sindel is no longer his because Netherrealm were too busy sucking Quan Chi's pasty white cock to make their main villain seem like his IQ exceeded single digits. Shao Kahn isn't a character anymore, he's a concept. The concept of the big powerful emperor that only the absolute best fighter can topple. But he's written more like an enforcer of the main villain, the big dumb brute that enacts the main villain's will like MK1 Goro. And considering how easily Quan Chi manipulates him on Shinnok's behalf, that's basically what he is. And then in MK11, that's exactly what he is. Kronika brings him into the time merger and recruits him easily. Unlike the Revenants, he is not given an example of what Kronika can actually do, so he has no reason to believe she actually can do what she claims and fall in line with her forces. Instead of a time merger, Kronika should have plucked the dead from various points in time, with Khan coming from right before his battle with Raiden. Kronika could then show him visions of his original victory and Raiden's undoing of that victory, using their mutual hatred of Raiden and a promise to restore Khan's rightful rule to motivate him into joining her cause, but with a moment that makes it clear Khan intends to usurp Kronika when he gets the chance. That way, the guy who ruled a successful empire for over 10 millenniums would feel like a schemer again, rather than a brute who will go along with anyone who just tells him they are powerful. And not only is he the dumbest motherfucker in the series right now, he also goes out like a bitch. Across two games, he has four fights. Liu Kang, Raiden, Kotal Khan, and Kitana. He gets fucking ratioed and is left beaten, but apparently still alive? Shao Kahn has gone missing. His injuries were not fatal. So it appears, Raiden. I don't know which question is in most need of answering. Why doesn't Kitana kill the guy who murdered her father and led her mother to suicide? Or why the fuck can MK2 Kitana now beat him? I mean, back in MK2, she really took after the man who raised her by waiting for the right opportunity to turn against him because she knew that if she tried to rebel, she would get absolutely bodied. In 2011's version, she couldn't even get out of the grasp of two no-name Tarkatans and was powerless to free herself despite being able to teleport. I guess that's where Melina gets it from. But now, later that same day, she bodies Khan all on her own. And by the end of this timeline, what does the big bad emperor have to show for it? He's killed Kung Lao, which is undone by the merger, broken Kotal's back, and... I guess bringing back a dead emperor in 2019 was always pointless. That Kronika chose you speaks volumes. She'd have won had she heeded me. What do you know of victory, Shao Kahn? Hold up. Hey, hey, hey. Well, my niggas who be thinking we saw. 
The series has always had such reverence for this character, the final boss of two games who came closest to conquering Earthrealm, being the tease in Reiko's MK4 ending, his alleged death marking the threat level of the Deadly Alliance, being one of the two characters added to Deception's GameCube port to make up for the lack of online functionality, receiving major focus in Armageddon's intro, being compared to Darkseid in the DC crossover, being the ultimate victor of Armageddon and serving as the entire reason the second timeline even exists, a new character being added to MKX just to be his successor, and serving as the pre-order bonus for MK11 with his return being noted as significant enough a threat to be the focus of the plot for the duration of the second act. And yet, it seems like this reverence is only held by the fans, while the current developers focus on him out of obligation or cynical knowledge that the fans love him. Why else would he have been completely stripped of everything that made him interesting or threatening, and turned into a brain-dead brute with no personality that isn't directly lifted from Donald fucking Trump? They focus on making him detestable with the most shallow characterization, sexual threats and orange man bad, rather than making him threatening, the latter of which really is where the focus should be when writing your main villain. If you want to make him hateable, be original and avoid the cheap stuff, sexual violence, violence towards children or animals, comparisons to real life villains. Do something like I did in the MK Chronicles chapter The Emperor's Trophy, where Khan's skull mask is an actual skull he turns into a mask in his workshop, convincing Katana to help him do it and oh by the way the skull is Jared's. Tricking Katana into turning her own father's skull into a mask for his killer to wear is the kind of fucked up things he should be doing, not making threats of sexual violence towards Cassie Cage like half the other male villains, or wearing a fucking Moga hat. Of course, why should we expect Netherrealm to care about giving Khan depth or a threatening aura when they decided that Khan killing Jared, canon since 26 years before MK11, was for a game to be changed so that Devorah did it, except Khan is also claimed to have done it in the same game, but oh no, it was Sindel actually also in the same game. I hesitate to imagine what he'll be like in MK12, now that they don't need to even pretend we're seeing the same characters. He'll probably be the brute enforcer sub-boss of the new boss character that everyone will forget about a week after release. If you liked this video, why not subscribe and support me on Patreon like these fine people here? If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you. Today's recommended video is Shao Kahn Got That by Somebody Junior. I honestly don't know how to describe it except to say that you'll need a cigarette by the time you're done watching it. I really like the part where Khan murders internet historian. 